Here's another question that was sent to me. The individual has a block wall with joists that are actually setting inside of the block wall. This isn't uncommon. You'll actually see them. I have it just like notches um, out of the blocks, but you'll actually see where they cut the blocks. Um, sometimes they, they cut one side of the block, sometimes they cut the entire block and then they fill it in and then of course stack the blocks on top and work their way up the rest of the building. Sometimes you're going to have a, a sheeted floor and then you'll have a wood framed building on top of that. But this right here, when I want to say that it is not, it's an it's a uncommon way to build something and a lot of times you're going to end up with the problems that the individual who sent me the question ends up with. How in the heck do you replace these joists when they become damaged? And they usually become damaged because they are embedded in concrete, which absorbs moisture. And of course, that moisture eventually works its way into the wood and uh, rots it or attracts termites. If the joists need to be replaced, if they need to be removed and replaced, um, this is going to be difficult, but you can actually do it one at a time. Cut the board a little shorter. You're going to be building a wall underneath it to support this end or use um, some L-metal. And again, there are other methods. For something like this, you might need to contact a structural engineer. Do not rely totally on my methods here. So you can, once you get the joist in at the one at, at the other end, you slide it into the slot. You'll need to support it and um, make sure that it is supported before you move to the next one. And of course, you can work your way down, um, but these do need to be supported. And this would be a, ca a case where you're going to re be removing the joist. And if you remove the joist, you might need to remove some of the framing above or the, because it'll be difficult to support the joist and any type of load bearing walls above. This right here is not going to be easy. And if you do end up doing something like this where you need to replace a few of the joists, you might consider redoing a section here and, and not um, and avoid uh, actually sliding it back into the notches again. You might want to just uh, go. Uh, you know, contact an engineer and see what they think. So, because again, once you set the boards in um, the concrete walls or the block walls, then you're going to end up with the same problem, I would imagine, over time. And if, for, if you're thinking, hey, you know what, this lasted 50 years, I'm going to get treated wood, it's never going to have a problem again in my lifetime, um, don't be shocked if it actually does. So, it's not a good, this is not a good method uh, structurally either. I don't consider it to be. So, after you have replaced a few of the joists, you can build a wall underneath it to support it, but you need to keep one thing in mind that the footing might be supporting the block wall, but it might not be supporting the wall. So this could actually be a problem here. This Something like this could require a footing. Wouldn't be uncommon to have this footing directly underneath the block wall and not something like this where I have it about two inches under. If you had something like this, this might be okay. But uh, an engineer might require, they might want something a little wider also. So keep that in mind. The walls might not have the support that you're looking for. And again, I have it a little shorter. I believe you need at least an inch and a half of the joist. Um, I, an inch and three quarter would be more along something I'd be looking at for the minimum distance that the joist can be sitting on top of the wall. And then, of course, just simply block each bay and uh, nail the blocks and the joist to the wall framing. And you might need to cut the joist a little smaller at the other end. Just make sure that you have the minimum um, that the joist is sitting on. You can always do this by when you um, cut the joist, just take and come in three inches, make a mark on the joist. That way when you put it, slide it into the slot, you can simply measure from the mark that's on the joist to the block wall and see how much of the um, joist is actually sitting on top of the block wall for your support. 
Another method that might work after you have replaced the joists and slid them into the slots, and of course you have it a little shorter over here, would be to use some type of metal as a support. And this is uh, common to see something like this supporting um, joist or um, framing uh, roof framing members. The only problem is, is you don't know what's inside the block wall. You know, um, if it's an older building, you could have mortar that's real weak. Something like this uh, might not uh, might not work. So again, this is something you would need to contact an engineer on. And of course, you could drill a hole underneath to um, drive a screw in or something. I just kind of put this here. I don't work a lot with metal. A lot of the times that we had, if we had metal like this, the hangers would be welded onto the metal and um, or we would attach a wood ledger to the wall instead of a metal um, something like this we would actually attach a maybe like a 4x12 and the four by top of the 4x12 would be even with the top of the joist only problem with this again is that we really don't know what um, the block wall is going to support so if you were to drill some holes in and say hey I'm gonna put some epoxy in there and I'm gonna I'm gonna um, put my ledger on there and you go to tighten up the bolts after the epoxy's dried and they pop right off because the block and the mortar in it is weak it's not designed for that where on a tilt-up building for example where you have solid concrete walls you could put a ledger like that on there because the bolts would be anchor bolts. They would be um, embedded properly. You're not going to have a problem like that. So something like this in the ledger would, I'm providing you with the example, but it might not be feasible at all to um, actually do it. Here's the method I would prefer if the joists aren't damaged too bad. That would simply be to attach a joist, a new joist to the old joist. And uh, what this would do is prevent you from removing the sheathing. It would prevent you from shoring everything up. And after you replace the, after you add the new joist, then um, this would be a good time to build a new wall underneath both sides of the um, both sides of the joist so that you could support them. So again, I wouldn't use the um, metal or the ledger for something like this. I would just use the walls, but but again, you would need to, you might need a footing for that also. Make sure that the joists are a little bit, um, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch might be for preferred away from the block wall. Um, this might not really make a difference because the moisture that would transfer into this board or that's already in here could actually transfer into here eventually so you might want to um, actually notch um, or cut these joists a little smaller um, and separate it from here but again I don't know what kind of problems you would run into doing that with the structural integrity of the building because like I said this is not um, something that would be earthquake proof here you know I mean just to give you an idea you have joists like here that are sitting in here they're not attached to the block um, if this thing was to start wiggling and in some way you could see where this wall could actually um, move in this direction the joist would fall out of the slots and fall down so this right here um, the way we're looking at it here would not be something that an engineer would like to see. So anyway, that's it for the video. And I, for those of you who have problems like these, you might seriously consider contacting an engineer to um, examine the building. And for those of you who, who are not going to contact an engineer, you're going to do it yourself, um, then uh, good luck.